Welcome to the Michigan Man Podcast on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew for Wolverine fans from coast to coast. Go Blue and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. This recruiting cycle is coming to a close in the next week, and Jim Harbaugh and his staff have been very busy. Joining us this week with an update is the recruiting insider from the Wolverine, E.J. Holland. First, a few of my thoughts to get us started. As of today, we have 18 commits in the class of 23. That will change in the next seven days. It will change again in February when several other kids we're after make their announcements. Like most of you, I wish this was a higher rated class. Most recruiting analysts point to a few reasons why this class is not top 10. Jim's flirtation with the NFL being the main one, and then losing two coordinators in a very short period of time. Throw in the fact we don't have a solid NIL vision for recruits, and that's probably why we've struggled. After back-to-back Big Ten championships and playoff appearances, you would think big-time recruits would be lining up to play here in Ann Arbor. It just hasn't happened that way. My guest today says we could have a big finish next week and even add a few top 100 kids in February. We'll just have to wait and see. He also says there is some very good talent in the 18 commits we have right now. Joining us next on our game day segment is one of the best recruiting writers in the business, E.J. Holland from The Wolverine. So stay with us. Here with us on our game day segment this week is Michigan recruiting insider EJ Holland from On3 The Wolverine. Great to have you back with us, EJ. Yeah, thanks for having me. And before we get rolling, uh, let's tell our, our Michigan listeners uh, about the Wolverine On3. I subscribed earlier this year and absolutely love it. It's almost Christmas, so uh, a subscription for a Wolverine friend that you love would be a great idea, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. Right now we have a special going on, $10 until next football season. So you get premium insider recruiting information, team information, basketball, basketball recruiting, transfer portal, all that good stuff over at the Wolverine right now for just $10 until August of 2023. Uh, like you said, it's a great gift. If you're already a subscriber, if you're not, um, definitely encourage you to come give us a try. Absolutely. All of my listeners, check it out. Uh, it's uh, your daily dose of Michigan news you can't live without. Well, EJ, the, uh, the early signing period right around the corner. Uh, the staff has been on the road in the last week since the Big Ten Championship game. And from the sounds of it, Jim Harbaugh has made quite the impression with uh, some of his in-home visits, hasn't he? Yeah, definitely. He's uh, been out there having fun, uh, seeing commits and targets, washing dishes, doing all types of <laughs> stuff, uh, jamming out the Tim McGraw and uh, trying out food. So he's been uh, definitely having fun. You know, it's one of those uh, times where only eight days away from signing day where you have to really turn up the heat on the recruiting trail. So Harbaugh's been in multiple uh, states. He was in Georgia visiting targets and commits. He was in Alabama, uh, Missouri. He's been uh, back in the state of Michigan. Today, he's uh, making his rounds uh, around Chicagoland. So he's been kind of everywhere trying to close out the class strong right now. 18 commits, so about six spots left or so. The class is... uh, Fairly disappointing from a ranking perspective, ranked number 22 in the country. So uh, much like last year, the Wolverines are looking to replicate the success of a strong close as we head into signing day. Well, as far as recruiting storylines go, EJ Michigan is still pushing for uh, Jair Hill from Illinois. I know Coach Klinskill visited him last week. Is it still down to Michigan and Illinois for him? Yeah, so Clink visited last week, uh, Harbaugh this week. So they're all in on Jair Hill. They've been all in for a better part of a year. I do think it's still Michigan and Illinois. There were some other schools out of region that came in late. Uh, Florida, Auburn, TCU uh, were some of the schools that entered the picture. But it's always been Michigan and Illinois, and it's kind of seesawed back and forth, and I think things are going Michigan's way 
uh, here as of late. Even you look at the in-home, uh, Brett Bielema made his on Wednesday of last week, so Harbaugh had the last day. Uh, Michigan got the last visit during the fall. He visited both Michigan and Illinois on multiple occasions. But it was Michigan that received that final trip in November, and it just so happened that Michigan was able to beat Illinois that weekend. So that definitely made a statement. And then today you had news that Ryan Walters, Michigan's, uh, I'm sorry, Illinois' defensive coordinator, has taken the head coaching job at Purdue. Uh, And obviously Michigan still has its staff intact, Jesse Minter. Uh, Michigan's defensive coordinator had some interest from head coaching jobs, but it looks like he's locked in with the Wolverines. So I definitely think Walters going to Purdue helped Michigan as Walters was a a big reason that, that Hill was really interested in Illinois. So I think uh, everything is lining up the right way for Michigan to close uh, with Jair Hill, who has been the top guy on the corner board for the majority of the cycle on 300 prospect recently received a big ranking bump up to the number 112 overall recruit nationally really love hill as a player six foot one 175 uh 187 100 meter speed can play uh corner nickel safety he's an excellent player on the back end well check me on this if i'm wrong but we uh, i think we just have one corner committee in this class right now and uh, from what i'm reading michigan is still actively though trying to uh, add a few more corners aren't they yeah definitely so michigan is trying to add Jair hill uh dj waller are our two targets that could likely end up in the class so we just mentioned Hill and talk a little bit about him. DJ Waller is an intriguing under the radar prospect uh, from the state of Ohio, about six foot three, so a taller corner that could also play uh, safety. And uh, like I said, he's kind of flown under the radar. He's down to Michigan and Kentucky, but he's a player that Steve Klingscale really likes. Michigan's set to host him for an OV this weekend. I think they'll push and close with him. And they're still working on Aaron Gates. He's a four-star prospect committed to Florida, more of a nickel prospect. He's been the number one guy on Michigan's nickel board for quite some time, has made three visits to Michigan this calendar year despite being committed to Florida. Uh, But still some things to work through there. Uh, As I'm talking to you, Clink just left his school, so he stopped by to see him. Jim Harbaugh had an in-home last week. But I think NIL is a pretty big factor in that recruitment, and I think that's a negative towards Michigan. But obviously, Kling scale is still trying. Like I said, it was just out there uh, before we hopped on to this interview. Well, as we uh, said, and we all know, we are getting to the end of this recruiting cycle, and there are a lot of kids who are, you know, wavering uh, around the country. And Michigan is still actively working on flipping some kids, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. So I just mentioned uh, Aaron Gates. Uh, Hayden Moore is a three-star linebacker from the state of Colorado, currently committed to Nebraska. He made an unofficial visit over the weekend. Things went really well there. Uh, You look at Michigan's linebacker commits, and you have a true big thumper in Samaj Bridgman. And then you have two guys that could play different positions. Jason Hewlett was taken as a defensive athlete. Breon Ishmael was taken as a linebacker, but could end up being an edge. So, uh, Hayden Moore offers more of a traditional linebacker role, could play the mic, could play the will. Uh, Michigan has been in contact with him for several months. They offered um, in the off season. They were going to host him for an OV, but never really made a huge push. He ended up committing to Nebraska, so that visit never happened. Uh, but now I think Michigan's really uh, gotten back in contact with him. Like I said, got him back on cam- or got him on campus for the first time, made a strong impression there. Nebraska is working hard to keep him in the class. Obviously, they had a coaching change, but Matt Rule has gone in home with him, and uh, Texas A&M is set to get his final visit, so that one kind of a, a three-way battle there. I think it's it's still close, no true leader. There are some other guys that they're keeping tabs on, like Notre Dame commit. Uh, Jeremiah Love, but I would say that Hayden Moore is uh, probably the most likely 
of the flip candidates right now, but you never know. I mean, Michigan, uh, it never fails. They're always full of surprises as we get close to signing day. Well, one of the early commits in this class, EJ, was running back Benjamin Hall from Georgia, and I know Mike Hart seemed like he was uh, big on him uh, at the time of his commitment. We know he had a rough senior year. Should we be surprised if he is not in this class? Uh, no, I know he had a rough senior year, but um, I think Michigan's going to keep him in the class. Um, he is planning to enroll early. Jim Harbaugh made an in-home visit last week along with Mike Hart. So I think they're going to go ahead and keep Hall, uh, Hall, even though he did struggle. As a senior, is a really compact back, uh, strong kid at 227 pounds um so Hart likes that type of running back with that type of build uh if anybody can get something out of Benjamin Hall it's Mike Hart I'm not sure I necessarily agree with taking Benjamin Hall especially as early as they did but Hart definitely saw something there uh so they are going to keep him obviously they have another running back commit in Cole Cabana who's more of a speedster and we were talking about flip candidates, and I failed to mention Darius Taylor. He's a four-star running back committed to Minnesota out of Wald Lake Western, so not too far from Ann Arbor. Uh, Ron Bellamy, the area recruiter, made a, a stop at his high school last week. Um, Michigan hosted him for a visit in October. It looked like he was going to stick with the Gophers. In fact, I wrote that yesterday, uh, but recruiting always changes and today Minnesota lost their running back coach to Kent State so he could be one to watch um would be a great late addition and I think would give us a little more confidence in uh and I guess keeping a hall in the class and still having uh two other talented backs with Cabana and Taylor so we'll see if uh things progress there if Michigan can uh pull out a late clip with Darius Taylor now that uh, the Gophers have lost their running back coach. Also some concern um, about edge recruit Ian Oetta, uh, the highest ranked player in this class. Uh, there's you know, read that he might be wavering, and is Miami the school making the big push for him? Yeah, I think, you know, with Eno, he's uh, been locked in with Michigan since the summer. He's been a vocal leader, but Lately, there have been some other schools creeping in, and he did make visits to Oklahoma and TCU. Obviously, those two schools are closer to home. Um, LSU has entered the picture late. They stopped by the school and saw him last week, so that's one to watch. And then you mentioned Miami. Obviously, Miami has a lot to offer from an NIL perspective. The Hurricanes were able to flip uh, at his good friend Collins and Champong from Michigan, and Collins is now recruiting Eno pretty hard. So I, I wouldn't rule out anything with Etta with all those schools involved. Uh, but I thought Jim Harbaugh um, made a big impression on him and his family last week on the in-home visit. As of today, I'm expecting Etta to stick in the class. But like I said, you can never rule anything out, especially this close to signing day. So we'll see what happens. But uh, not not panicking right now, just kind of monitoring the situation. Well, the recruit I get the most questions on is Nicholas Harbor, who's uh, now waiting until February, from what I understand, to make his decision. Uh, is Michigan losing any ground with him that you've heard of? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, Harbor already used his official visit on Michigan, so if he returns, it would have to be an unofficial. He's taking all his OB, so he used Michigan and South Carolina in the fall. He just made an OB to Maryland, and uh, he's set to make another official to Georgia. He'll see LSU in January. So, as I put it, it's it's not a sprint; it's a marathon with Nicholas Harbor. Uh, the Wolverines are going to continue to recruit him hard and uh, hope to get him back on campus for an unofficial in January. But still, a long way to go. So, I definitely wouldn't say Michigan's losing steam. There's just uh, a long way to go with that process. Well, as of right now, EJ, we have 18 verbals in this class, uh, and, and we know that's going to change. It's ranked number 22, I think, in the country. But still, you know, when you look at coming off the uh, last year's great season and then following up with another Big Ten championship, a trip to the playoffs, a lot of uh, my listeners, your readers, I know have uh, said they're disappointed that it isn't a better class. But what do you think are the major reasons uh, coming off of two years of great success 
that this isn't a blockbuster class. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, there are a couple different factors dating back to, you know, earlier in the year, at the very beginning of the year, you obviously had the Jim Harbaugh NFL flirtation, and that came at the worst time possible. Michigan coming off a Big Ten title, a college football playoff appearance. They had a an opportunity to go out and sell that on the road. Harbaugh was all over the country, and the biggest question was, are you going to the NFL? Uh, nobody wanted to talk about Michigan's success. It was more so if Harbaugh was staying. And so that just dragged out for a long time, including Michigan's first big visit weekend for underclassmen. There were still some questions with Harbaugh in the NFL. And then not only that, you had a ton of staff movement. You lost both coordinators. You had guys move positions. You know, Ron Bellamy moving from defense to offense. You had Jay Harbaugh switching over to defense. So you had a lot of guys moving to different positions. Um, so that hurt with relationships that were pre-existing. Uh, you also had new guys coming in like Mike Elston. So just so much movement from a staff perspective. And it wasn't all figured out until a little later heading into spring. So again, kind of hurt initial relationships. Uh, but most importantly, uh, Michigan still doesn't have an NIL plan set in place when it comes to a recruiting perspective. They've done a great job of helping kids on the team get deals. And you're seeing players on the roster have plenty of success, like a J.J. McCarthy or Blake Corum. But uh, there's no set plan when it comes to the recruiting trail. And I think that's definitely hurt. Um, I mentioned earlier the uh, Aaron Gates recruitment. You know, there's nothing for Michigan to really – point to other than what current players on the roster are making and that's not necessarily the same for other schools that are being more aggressive in making initial offers to recruits and while some of it some people might consider it pay for play and not necessarily nil there's nothing the ncaa is doing to really enforce it so it's all kind of under a gray nil umbrella so it's been tough for michigan to compete with its peers that are doing the NIL, you know, play mm. for play, whatever you want to call it, on the recruiting trail this cycle. Well, you're out on that recruiting trail a lot, talking to players and coaches and their parents. And when it comes to Michigan, it is a huge concern where NIL is considered. Uh, when you're talking, do you hear a lot of a uh, lot of recruits or a lot of their parents say that is a negative against Michigan? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think recruits are putting it out publicly. Uh, as far as, you know, this school's offering me X, Y, and Z, and Michigan's not offering me X, Y, and Z. <laughs> like I said, it's still a, a gray area. And, you know, I think kids don't like to be associated with NIL, even if it is a big factor. It still has a negative stigma, you know, dating back to when there was no NIL and there were some deals being done under the table. But, I mean, it's, it's very apparent. Um, from just talking to sources, from talking to families off the record, kids off the record. I mean, NIL is playing a huge role, and it's not going away. Look, I hate writing about I had this discussion on, on the Wolverine today. I hate writing about it. I hate talking about it. I don't, I, if it were up to me, there would be no NIL. It's kind of taken some of the joys away from uh, why I started doing this job in the first place. But it's here to stay, and you have to adapt or die. And if uh, Michigan doesn't adapt, soon then your uh, model for sustained success fails i mean it's all great michigan coming off big back to back big 10 titles they can develop guys they've shown success but you still need the jimmies and the joes to, to headline your roster uh just like you have jj and donovan and junior and all these highly touted recruits you can have diamonds in the rough sprinkled in but in order to have sustained success you still need to recruit elite talent and that elite talent is commanding nil dollars and michigan is currently not competing and you're seeing that in this class no top 100 recruits coming off big back-to-back -back big 10 titles and back-to-back -back college football playoff appearances and that you know that just shouldn't happen it's unacceptable well ej of the 18 young men that we have committed in this class uh, right now which ones uh, do you see having the best chance to uh, get out in the field and contribute this fall Eno Etta, I mean, is obviously the highest-ranked recruit in the class right now. He's only been playing football for about three and a half years, but his upside's tremendous. He might need some time to develop, but 
he's already, you know, six foot five, two hundred and sixty pounds, so he fits that Michigan edge profile. Um, I do feel like he'll get some uh, early rotation in. I think Cole Cabana is a guy that, with that type of speed, um, 10 5, 5, 100 meter, uh, top 200 uh, and 50 prospect out of Dexter, Michigan. He had a great senior season. And like I said, that speed is killer. I think you can use it all over the field. I think Cabana will get some time in the backfield, in the slot, as a kick returner, as a punt returner. And when you talk, when you look at the backfield too, it's not like there's a ton of talent there. You you likely have Blake Corum leaving. You have Donovan stepping up. And then you have T.J. Stokes who's flashed, and I think T.J. Stokes is going to be a good back, not a great back. And then you have Javier Dunlap who's disappointed, and after that you have some walk on. So it's not like the talent in Michigan's running back room is amazing. I think Cabana will have an opportunity to make an early impact there, get some carries. But like I said, worst case scenario, you move them all around and you use them uh, a little bit like an, an A.J. heading, except with more time in the backfield. But I really like what he brings to the table. Um, so those two guys definitely uh, highlight the uh, the immediate impact players. There are other guys that I'm, I'm high on, like Evan Link and Amir Herring, to. Uh, four-star offensive linemen, but, you know, offensive linemen have to make an, an immediate impact. Those guys will need to develop, but I think uh, Sheryl Moore did a good job of finding those guys, and, um, you know, with Eric All transferring, I think maybe uh, Deacon Tonielli could get into the tight end rotation, four-star tight end out of Oswego, great basketball player, can jump out of the gym, super athletic, flex end. Um, so he's another one I would watch for sure. Well, we have just a, a little more than a week before this recruiting cycle ends. And of course, uh, we've got, as we've been mentioning, we have the 18 commitments uh, right now. And who knows what's going to happen with uh, some flips and some late commits. But it looks like the class is gonna, going to end up a top 20 class, won't it? Yeah, you're probably looking at a top 20 class. I mean, there are still some guys out there potentially going into the late period. Uh, that are really highly touted. You have Nicholas Harbour, who we mentioned. Michigan's still in there for the five-star athlete. Uh, Michigan's in it for another top 100 athlete, Malachi Coleman, a recent decommit from Nebraska. He's waiting until the late period. You have uh, Chicago Bears defensive lineman, Jamel Howard, who's really becoming a late senior riser, likely waiting until the late period. So there will be some guys that Michigan – is still in the mix with in February that can improve their ranking. And then as far as the early signing period, I think, you know, there are a few guys out there like uh, Trey Pierce, who Jim Harbaugh is visiting today, three star, a high three-star offensive lineman out of Chicago, Brother Rice. That would be uh, a really nice addition. Jair Hill, you know, sealing the deal with him would boost Michigan's ratings. I mean, again, he would be the top rated commit in the class. Uh, overtaking Eno Etta. So, yeah, I would expect top 20, you know, uh, top 15 would be great at this point. Uh, but I think that's kind of the, the ceiling as things stand out. And I know a lot of Michigan fans are disappointed with that, but, you know, it is what it is. And after this cycle ends in, in a week and a half, the emphasis will shift to the class of 2024. A lot of it already has. Jim and the program really need to notch it up in this next cycle, don't they, EJ? Yeah, I think 2024, I mean, the hope has to be top five class, uh, all things considered. The success on the field should equate to success on the recruiting trail. Um, they're in it with a number of highly touted recruits in 2024. I think if they can get the NIL situation sorted, that'll be a big boost. If they can avoid the Jim Harbaugh NFL rumors, that'll be a big boost. If they don't have as much staff movement and look I, I understand you're going to have staff movement but if they can keep most of the guys in place uh, that'll certainly help and you know something that's been missing the last couple of cycles has been a true quarterback uh, leading the class you haven't had a quarterback leader since J.J. McCarthy so I think sealing up Jaden Davis who's Michigan's top overall target uh, top 100 quarterback out of Charlotte Providence Day in North Carolina Locking him up early and having him lead the class would be uh, terrific. And you look at Michigan's uh, commit list right now, still uh, small in 2024 as expected, but you have uh, some some highly touted guys there. Mason Curtis is an on 300 linebacker. Hogan Hansen, 
Uh, Michigan's newest tight end and Michigan's newest commit is a four-star tight end out of the Pacific Northwest. So you already have some talented uh, pieces in play. And uh, I think adding Davis as that theater would be uh, huge for the Wolverine. Oh, absolutely. Getting uh, that commit from Jaden Davis uh, might snowball things, but uh, he, he's supposed to commit relatively soon or make an announcement, isn't he? Well, he was supposed to make a decision before the end of the year, so he still has roughly 18 days to do that. So <laughs> we'll see if uh, we'll see if it comes through. If not, you know, I, I'll be a little concerned. So we'll see uh, if he does set a decision date soon. Jim Harbaugh was out there last week uh, seeing him as with Clemson. So we'll see how things kind of shake out. Well, final question before we let you get away, EJ. Uh, we're just a, a few weeks away from the semifinal game with the TCU Give us your thoughts uh, on how Michigan matches up with the Horned Frogs. Yeah, TCU is a program I'm uh, pretty familiar with, just being from uh, the Lone Star State myself. Um, they've done a great job of finding and developing talent, kind of like uh, Michigan. I mean, with less high-end recruits, they've done less with more. Uh, that was always the model under Gary Patterson and has transitioned uh, with Sonny Dykes. They find terrific athletes and mold them into great players they have a really interesting and unique defense running the 335 so i'm interested to see how that matches up with michigan's offense uh but overall i think the top end talent for michigan's there i think michigan's the superior team uh so i do think the wolverines will move on and and perhaps have a rematch with Georgia in the national championship. Here with us today as we uh, have talked recruiting is Michigan recruiting insider EJ Holland from On3, the Wolverine. Always a pleasure to have you on the show, EJ. We thank you for your time, and we look forward to that next visit. Anytime. Thanks for having me. On Quick Hits today, next week will be a busy one for Michigan football. The early signing period will end, and practice will get underway for the Fiesta Bowl semifinal. There will be a lot to talk about. So next week, we'll focus on our opponent, the TCU Horned Frogs. This is a team I've only seen play a couple of times, and I have to say, they are entertaining to watch, but I don't know a whole lot about them. On Thursday, we'll get to know TCU from the view of their very own radio play-by-play voice, Brian Estridge. So make sure you join us. That does it for another week. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. Have a great Wolverine week, everyone. Until we meet again, take care, and as always, go blue. Thanks for joining us today on The Michigan Man, here on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew. Our listener lines are open 24-7 for your calls at 313-263-4842. That's 313-263-4842. Or email us at themichiganmanpodcast at yahoo.com. That's themichiganmanpodcast at yahoo.com. The Michigan Man Podcast is produced at the studios of Robin Lynn Productions, Allen Park, Michigan, and is not affiliated with the University of Michigan. Go Blue!